Um, we have one more presentation um, from, from Byron, and uh, this is one that you, you'll probably not want to miss. This is another really cool um, proof of concept to, to share and, and kind of, again, where we're headed with like, how, how do we really build these real practical microservice architectures? Um, what kind of other pieces do we need and, and what kind of things are, you know, can we practically do uh, building on top of things like Jetstream? So Byron, I'm going to let you take it away. Cool. All right. So uh, for what it's worth, my slide lightweight re relational databases at the edge and streams are great, but we want to actually query things. And now we have a demo. So just want to throw that, throw that out there. I know we're running short on time. So the sort of motivation behind this um, is really, again, we have streams, we have KV, baked into the server and better, like different data models to be able to query things um, is, is useful. So how can we take a stream, a raw stream, and how can we actually like represent that as a table in a relational database? And again, focusing on the edge compute uh, that sort of the whole theme of, of the day was, was really about um, or enabling edge to be uh, to, to, to be able to run run workloads and have data locality. So we're going to quick quick run through a proof of concept um, that I won't take too much time showing. So we're, we're just going to run a standard fresh uh, NAT server with Jetstream enabled. We're going to run a little demo program that is going to create two streams, a customer stream and a orders stream. So we can just look at those real quick. And sorry, the uh, text is a little wonky, but you can see there's a customer stream here, order stream here. There's a hundred static customers. And then if we look at the orders, that's actually populating every 200 milliseconds or so, there's a new order coming in. All right, cool. So this is just two streams that are being populated over time. And now we can start our, this is called, this is just a proof of concept name. People might be familiar with KSQL DB or, or, or uh, KSQL. Uh, this is just kind of a play, play on that a little bit. Subtly different, obviously much simpler um, in, in its current form. But the, the concept is that you wanna be able to connect to a NAT server. You wanna be able to uh, populate and produce a database. And so the approach taken here to be nice and friendly to edge devices is to say, let's use existing databases that work well there. So this is actually using SQLite embedded and there are plans to support uh, DuckDB as well. And that's more of an OLAP uh, style database compared to OLTP that SQLite is. But generally um, because of the way it's implemented, we can extend drivers out to frankly any number of databases that are appropriate. So we'll start up a NSQL process that basically connects to the NAT server uh, as a standard client. And then it also uh, on the fly creates a SQLite database uh, on disk in this, in this case, not, not memory. So the second thing we can do, and I love my, my history, so I don't take any people's time. So the next command that we can run in SQL table, so we're creating a table called orders. And by default, it's going to uh, expect that the table name is also equivalent to the stream name uh, in, in, in Jetstream there. And so this is essentially initializing the table um, without any arguments. And we'll check out the scheme in a second. Created a table, created a consumer, and it's subscribed to, to, the, to the table in this case. So if we look at... Uh, our SQLite database. So by default, the the, the table is uh, pretty pretty basic because it's kind of hard to infer any useful information from a uh, a blob of data that is the NATS message um, source. So what we can do though is create a handful of columns that uh, correspond to the sequence ID, the subject timestamp. The header values, SQLite supports native JSON, even though types are weird in SQLite. 
and and then of course a, a, a blob of data in, in this case. So if we do a quick um, query, magically there are records in our orders table. And that's because this, this little process is subscribed to the stream and constantly inserting new data. And remember the orders one is the one that's updating every 200 milliseconds. So more records are going in and it's just there. And so if we just look at a quick order, this is going to be a little difficult to read, but you can see there's the ID, subject, timestamp. And then this is the actual payload, which is happens to be JSON. And it renders, this is like a food order, for example. So that's cool. So that's just like standard stuff. The value add here is that it's in a database and using JSON operators and things like that within the database, you can now parse out the, the data, you can join tables, all that kind of stuff. So now let's look at our customers table and we'll go here. So in this example, we're actually doing a little bit, a couple more fancy things. We're specifying the encoding of the data, the, the message data in the stream as being JSON. And with that, uh, you can actually define explicit columns to augment the table. So we can say there's an ID, there's a name, and there's a preferences uh, field in the JSON payload of the message. And these are going to create corresponding columns in the table. And then I also specify a key, which is the ID within the message. So the, the column ID, I'm specifying this is the primary key, essentially, of that record. And then, of course, the name of the table. So I create that. And I'm going to contrast these two things. So the orders table is an append-only uh, table. Given the, the streams, we didn't define an actual unique identifier other than the sequence ID. So if, if there are retries, if there are sort of anything like that, um, records in a table with the same sequence ID will not be overwritten because it's an append-only table. With this table, however, because we specify the key to be the ID column, uh, this is actually kind of a uh, a, a table-based stream, if you want to call it that. So this is equivalent to, if, if you are familiar with KSQL DB or, or KSQL, you have these sort of like append-only tables, streaming tables versus uh, table-based tables, if you want to call them that. So let's uh, quickly look at this. Nope, I don't want to look at my README. SQLite, I can't type. There we are. All right. So our schema, customers, we have sta our standard fields there still. And now we have a name, a preferences and ID column. So if we just grab that real quick, these are real columns. And you can actually represent them directly as opposed to Our, our data column that is just still the encoded JSON, right? So we're going to quickly take one more minute of your time. So I said this is a state, kind of a table-based um, ta table, based, uh, table or a key-based table. And so if we look at, uh, let's say, the, just simply the first record here of an ID 1 and the preferences, Again, these are food preferences. What I can do is actually go in and append or write a new message to the stream. The, the name really doesn't matter in this case. So I'm just going to say, now my name is just Kelly. Preferences and apples. And I write that message to the stream and let's see, oh, processed 101 messages. So it picked it up. And now our first record got updated with a new set of preferences and a new name. So this is a way that we still have the same number, of course, database locked, 
uh, same number of customers. We didn't append a new customer record. We actually updated the record in place because we have the we've declared the unique identifier of that of that record. So that was it. That's, That's all I wanted to show. Cool. <laughs> nice and quick, quick. but uh, it's a yeah proof proof of concept. Just uh, to and you can imagine having streams, and then you can have mirrors of streams that are coming down to the to the an edge device, and then you can run this. And SQL process that is basically consuming these, building out tables, and of course you can join, join between any of these tables since it's using just a, a real database. This is so awesome. Yeah, I can even imagine sure. you could have materialized views that get you know fire off Nats events when you know they get updated, and th there's a lot of really cool things that you could do here. And I, I'm excited to see how projects like these grow and how the community maybe like feeds into them. Um, because I mean, there, I think there's a lot around a lot of the concepts of event sourcing that, that make this really awesome. Yep. Yep. And as you'd expect the, uh, end SQL process can get disconnected from the server and then you reconnect and then it just keeps, uh, resuming and populating the records. So super cool. Yeah. If you have, uh, ideas, feedback, if you have, if you're curious about this, let me know, let any of us know here and, uh, yeah, that's it.